Hello everyone and welcome to this week's review. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, Schaefer Touchdown Models. This is a Schaefer Valiant and I'm going to be showing you about the Touchdown model in general. This one in particular, how I feel about it, how it writes, whether it's right for you and for me, and just explaining everything about the model in general. So let's jump right into it. So this is the Schaefer Touchdown. Um, it was developed after the vacuum filler that Schaefer produced, which was what they mainly used after they phased out their lever fillers. The lever filler being what I reviewed in the last vintage review. If you want to go check that out, I checked out the Estabrook J, which was a great lever filler. This, uh, this touchdown filler, it's what is uh, known as a pneumatic filler. So it still uses a latex sack to store ink. But uh, unlike lever fillers, which use a uh, lever to depress the sack and force the air out and ink back in, this uses air pressure. So it pushes the air out of the barrel, which depresses the sack, and then releases that vacuum and lets the ink rush back in. Now, on principle, that is, I mean, it's pretty similar to a vacuum filler, but the thing that is good about this model is it's simple to repair and it's simple to use. It's a one-stroke fill, so it's just like a vacuum filler in that sense too, but <laughs> the difference right there is it's simple to repair. This is a really easy repair job. It's really recommended as sort of like a good first repair, just like a, a lever filler, because something like a vacuum filler, something like this, it's much more difficult to repair. Um, I'll go over soon uh, a, a vacuum filler like this, but for now just take my word for it. That these are much more difficult to repair and you don't really even have to take, to take my word for it there are really only a few people that repair vacuum fillers out there and they usually cost about 60 65 dollars to get someone to repair it this costs about half that to get repaired by a professional so Schaefer definitely accomplished what they wanted to do there in making it more simple to repair it was initially released in the same size as the standard vacuum fillers. You can see this vacuum filler is a little thicker, um, but not by much. They thinned down the model a little bit about a year into release um, to make it, I guess, more in line with the style of the time. And then there were regular and Triumph nibs offered, depending on what model you bought. This particular one is a Triumph nib. Very cool and unique conical nib. And that nib is a gold nib. It's pretty pretty fancy, good good to use, cool to look at. Uh, it's paired with an ebonite feed. This body is plastic. They moved away from the celluloid that they used on their vacuum fillers towards these single colored plastics. Um, and then, as well as that, they had customary on their lever fillers that visualated section. This one's a little ambered, so you can't really can't really see through it unless you put it up to a really strong light. But right here, it's a little see-through, and you can kind of tell your ink level. And then the color of this one, this is Persian blue. It's actually it's a really nice plastic, not one that was around too long, I believe. But they released it in quite a few colors. Now, in terms of how the actual filling system works, here's a little drawing for you. As you can see, uh, right here is a uh, latex sack, just like you find on lever fillers. It's slightly a different type of sack. This one needs to be, like have a little neck. So instead of the ones that you use for uh, normal lever fillers, which are just like that, and you cut them to size, these are, kind of like that, they have a little like neck right here. Uh, but anyways, so this is surrounded by a metal sort of hood or shroud with a couple of holes in it, and that makes up the barrel. And then this end knob unscrews, and it has a little tube right here, a metal tube. And then at the very end of the barrel is an O-ring, which creates the seal and you pull back the tube, put the pen in ink, depress the tube, and then once it reaches the end, it releases the vacuum. There's a little air hole right here. 
<laughs> that's one of the things you need to keep an eye out for when you repair. That little air hole right there, <laughs> if it's like covered in silicone grease or something, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. It depresses the, it pushes the air out, which compresses the sac. And then once the vacuum is released, the sac expands again, and then it can take an in ink. But yeah, it's a pretty simple repair job. Um, I mean, I can show you, even though it's filled, you can unscrew this if you don't have it secured in. Right there, that's the metal shroud and then the sack right there. And probably won't be able to see that, but there's that metal shroud in there. And you can unscrew it. And then you put the pen and ink and depress it and it releases the vacuum at the right end of the stroke. So yeah, that's how that works. Um, in terms of the pen in general, it's a thin and light pen, definitely intended for sort of everyday use. That's what they were used for at the time. Uh, and it's easy to operate, but it is difficult to clean, just like a lever filler. Um, and likewise, goods and bads, it's easy to repair, just like I said. it's. You really just got to replace the sack and replace the o-ring and that's it. Um, but if you want to maintain it, you do got to keep some silicone grease on that tube in order to keep it uh, a smooth operation. But still, overall, very fun and unique pen to use. Uh, it is available in a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different styles. Um, so there's really something for everyone there if you want to try it out. So, you know, not as common as lever fillers. Lever fillers were basically everywhere in the 20s and 30s and stuff, I think. It was about their era. This came out in the 50s, I believe. Um, not as common as lever fillers. Really, only Schaefer used the touchdown filling system. Other brands used pneumatic fillers. They just weren't as common as lever fillers. But they weren't uncommon. You can definitely find a good amount of them out there. Um, and for that reason, it's really a, a good vintage pen for everyday use. Uh, similar to the lever fillers, you know, it's got the latex sacks. You gotta kind of be careful with what inks you put in there, and you should probably clean it out uh, more often than like a cartridge converter. But still, it's a great pen, fun to use, um, and I would say recommended as a vintage model in general. So now that we've learned a little bit, a little bit about the Schaefer Touchdown model. Let's look at this pen in particular. So, like I said, this one is the Persian blue color. I mean, that's a pretty nice blue, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I'm quite the fan of blue pens. This one has uh, a gold filled cap band, which is uh, about a centimeter long. That makes this the Valiant model with that um, Triumph nib. Just look at that. That is seriously cool. And uh, yeah, this one, it's a pretty thin and light pen, like I said, as most touchdowns were, but it's great for everyday use. Um, I bought this one from Paper Wants a Pen, um, Stacy Hills on Instagram. He does a lot of great work on touchdown fillers and Schaefer pens in general. Um, these also, cool for the time, they came with spring-loaded clips, which I think is really cool. They're really easy to use. Of course, it's got that white dot that Schaefer is famous for. And the imprint on the barrel, it says W.A. Schaefer Penco, Fort Madison, Iowa, USA. Made in USA. So, specifically to this pen, um, the filling knob looks like someone had a appetite for pens, a previous owner it's been munched down on a little bit, which is a shame. My judgment on them is uh, not uh, the topic of this video, but uh, it's unfortunate to say the least. But, you know, it's still a nice looking pen. Um, this, uh, this one, as all Triumph nibs are, it's definitely a nail. It was also a pretty dry rider when I got it, uh, which fits some people's taste, but personally, wasn't quite for me. The nib just didn't really work for me, although <laughs> it's kind of been uh, an on and off 
project trying to gradually improve it over time every time I pick it up give it a little tune see what works and I've got it to a place where I kind of enjoy it it's a little wetter now I've got it inked with Aurora Black so it's got good flow uh, and it's a nice smooth writer like I said it's great for use in like classes taking down notes writing in my planner things like that and for that reason it's a pen that I reach for pretty often in my uh, vintage collection I think that's enough uh, words about that let's show you this in action first with a size comparison and then we'll move into the writing sample so we have the Schaefer Valiant compared to a Parker Vacuumatic Conid Minimalistica almost too big for the frame um, and then in Lamy Safari. So then uncapped, yeah, you can see it's sort of your standard normal sized vintage pen. Definitely smaller than something like a Conid, but still great for everyday writing. So now for the writing sample. This is a Schaefer Valiant Touchdown. It's got a 14 carat Triumph nib. It's not marked for its size, but it's about medium ish. Maybe into a broad, depending on the ink, but speaking of ink. This one, like I said, is inked with Aurora Black. Works great in vintage pens, flows well, and it suits this nib pretty nicely. So now for our pangram. I forgot to mention that a uh, section has that little visualated bit, which really isn't so see-through uh, in its current state. Um, it also is like slightly ridged, you can see there, which really helps get a, like a, a good grip, um, much more than sort of like a smooth plastic or metal grip section. Uh, and yeah, I like it a lot. It works really well. As for wetness, this pen isn't isn't too wet. It's not as dry as it was when I originally got it, but uh, most of most of that is just the fact that I'm using Aurora Black. Um, and then yeah, as for line variation, you aren't getting any. This is Valiant nibs or or Triumph nibs, excuse me, are known for being quite the nail. But still, it's a great writer, fun to use. Like I said, it's a good option for a vintage pen if you want to get into repairing. Certainly, uh, this is a good place to start. And just collecting uh, or using vintage pens in general, I would highly recommend it. And it's just something cool to sort of experience. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that look at the Schaefer Touchdown in general, and specifically this one that I have. I should note it also came with a pencil, a matching pencil. It actually is a pretty great mechanical pencil. It uses uh, 0.9 millimeter lead, so you can use it with modern lead. It's pretty great. Um, it's a little bit difficult to operate. You gotta sort of twist this right here and over the years it's gotten quite tight to use. But other than that, um, it's a great little pencil and a nice little set to have. Really uh, does you in a, a school environment. He, I use this for my tests and any homework that needs to be done with pencil and then use this for my notes. It's a nice little pairing. So yeah, that is the Shiver Touchdown. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like. And then of course, if you want to see more in the future, feel free to subscribe as well. I had my mic a little closer 
a little closer for a little more ASMR experience. So hopefully that worked well. Hopefully I didn't get super quiet by going over here when I was writing. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.